Hi, I'm Johnny, and you're watching The Hexy Beast. Today I'm going to be doing a quick review of this game right here, Everdell. So, let's get it to the table. Okay, so Everdell is an engine building card game mixed with a worker placement game. Published by Starling Games and designed by James A. Wilson, with art by Andrew Bosley. So, without much further ado, shall we get into the game? So in Everdell, what you're trying to do is play workers to gain these resources so that you can play either cards from your hand or cards from the meadow. In the solo game, you're going to be using the, a different colour meeple to block spaces for you throughout the game. The four resources you can gather in the game is these, which is wood. We have these, which is stone or pebbles. We have these, which are your resin crystals. And we have these very squishy things, which are berries. So in Everdell, you would place one of these workers into any of the open spaces on the board so that you could gain the resources from that space. So for example, in my first turn, what I would do is I would point my worker by here to gain the reward by here, which is two resin crystals. So I now have them in my inventory. So I should probably use my second worker to go to this place, which has two wood and tells me to draw a card. Anytime you ask to draw a card, unless otherwise stated, you will be drawing from the main deck in the tree. I, I drew this twig barge. So with my resources in front of me now, one of the things I could do or probably should do is play a card from either the meadow or my hand. Well, I've noticed in my hand I've got this card, the refinery, which basically is going to cost me two wood and one resin to play into my tableau. Because it's a green card, when I play it, I will actually gain the effect of the card when I play it and in the production phase, which we'll talk about later. So I'm going to spend these two wood and one resin place this card into my tableau. Okay, so every time I place a card into my tableau, Rugwar, who is the enemy, will roll this d8 to decide which card he will take from the meadow. So, because we rolled a 6, he is going to take the 6th card in the meadow and place it into his tableau. Any time you take a card from the central meadow, you must replenish it. So because I played this farm card, it means I would gain one berry. So I'm just going to take this berry and put it in my inventory. Okay, seeing as I don't think I've got anything in my hand that I can play right now, or anything in the meadow that I have the resources to gather, then I would say it's the end of season. So let's go take a look at that tree. So let me introduce you to the ever tree. Up here we have these special events, which if you gain the combos on the top, so if I had a doctor and a postal pigeon in my tableau, I would be able to claim this and gain the reward on the card. So because I, as you saw just now, I ended the round, this would mean that we would take both our worker and Rugwarts worker and gather our workers from the board. So as you can see, as we move through the seasons, now we've just done the first, we're going to activate all our green cards as well. Which, as you know, because I have this in my tableau, means I'm going to gain a berry. Okay, so what Rugwalt will do, once the round is over and the season has advanced, he will first place the meeple he acquired onto the first card in the top row. Then he will move his meeple anti-clockwise once around these special places. And then we will move his main top row meeple across to the next full circle. So that would be the end of season. At this point now, I would be able to place any of my workers and continue playing the game until next season. Um, every time I play a card though, you must remember that this has to get rolled. One very important thing to note is you can never have a hand size of more than eight cards. If you are asked to draw any cards at this point, instead of like in most games where you would discard some cards and draw others, in this game you would just not draw any cards at all. Okay, one of the interesting things you might also notice about these cards is that in the bottom corner sometimes there will be this little icon and the name of another card. 
This basically means if this card is in your tableau, you will be able to build this chip sweep for free. So because we have got this refinery in our city, we get to take this chip sweep for free. And to denote that in the game, what we do is we take one of these little tokens by here and cover the corner. As you can see, the power on this chip sweep is to activate a green power in our city. So right now, we would say, choose between one of these. So would I prefer a berry or a resin crystal? I'm gonna choose this time to take the berry. Okay, so now that I've got four green cards in my city, I can now spend my worker, if I choose to, over here to gain one of these special events. So this one by here, which will be worth three points to me at the end of the game. As you can see, this is denoted by here, saying that if I have four green cards in my city, I will be able to use a worker to gain this Harvest Festival event. Another thing worth noting is that in summer, instead of doing a production phase where you'd activate all the green cards, you would actually draw two cards from the meadow. As you can see, because we've advanced the season again, Rugwater is now blocking two of our cards, our stone spot, and this special space. One thing to remember when we're playing cards for Rugwart is to keep them in separate piles based on colour. As if he succeeds in meeting any of the requirements for the, spe for the events around the bottom of the tree, he will gain them himself when the season advances. Okay, so this is what I call a blue card. Um, when I play this card, instead of gaining the effect on the card, it actually has an effect that would trigger any time I perform a certain action. So in this case, when playing a critter, I would discard the innkeeper from my city to decrease the cost of the critter I would play by three berries. Another card we can play is one of these red cards, which has a worker spot on them, and any time you would place a worker on this card, you would also activate this ability. The other kinds of cards you can play in the game are these uh, grey cards, which basically give you a one-time power when you use it. As well as these purple cards, which are usually worth a lot of points, but also give you end-game scoring conditions. Okay, so as you can see, by the time we enter the final season, the entire top row of cards has been blocked. And instead of moving onto another space over here, it's instead moved onto one of these spaces, which we can only use in autumn. Which allows us to discard cards for that number of points. So if I discarded four cards, I could place a worker here to get four points. Something worth noting is that when you're playing a bird like this one, when you gain its ability and discard to gain points, one thing I like to do to make sure I keep track of it is to put the points on the card itself. So I would discard these two cards. In this game, you always discard face down. And that would get me two points from that ability, which I'll leave here until the end of the game when I score. Another thing you need to make sure of while playing is to make sure you don't play any unique constructions more than once. But common constructions, you can have as many as you like in your city. So as you can see, I'm on the end of the game with one worker left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my worker onto this spot by here. So I'm going to discard one, two, three, four, so that I now gain four points from this. Okay, so now it's time to score the end of the game. So what will happen is that for each one of these you did not complete, in year one, Rug War will gain three points each, making that a 12. Every other card, apart from the purple ones, apart from these guys, will actually be worth two points, whereas the purple ones like this one will be worth three. So if we count up, we've got 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, times 2 for 22 points, plus 3, 25, plus 12, 37, and then we've just got this one spot over here, plus 3 for 30 points. So now it's time to see if we've won the game. So first, let's check what we got here. Okay, so end of game, she's not paid with husband, so we wouldn't score that. Okay, so basically, this one says for each unique construction, we gain a point. So we have one, two, just two unique constructions. So that would be worth 
two points. And then we would just go into scoring the actual points as listed on the cards. So we'll put these aside for a minute. So we've got four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, plus three. For 21 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 26, and then with this we've actually got a draw. Okay, so now it's time for me to tell you what I think of the game. So, first of all, I've got to say that for aesthetics, I've given this game a 9 out of 10. Um, for obvious reasons, just look at it. The art on the cards is just lovely. Just, you know, any any card has brilliant artwork on it. You've got the tree itself. It definitely has a lot of table presence. On top of this, I think that these these resource uh, chits or tokens or whatever you want to call them, um, they, they have a very tactile feel. The berries feel squishy, the wood feels wooden, the stone feels stone, and so on. So for me, the art and the aesthetics has gotten a 9. So moving on from that now, I'm going to say for gameplay, I've given this an 8 out of 10. Um, mainly because, although quite simple, the mixture of worker placement and engine building, um, it, it can it can feel um, very engaging. It lets you make a lot of tough decisions throughout your game. I also find that sometimes, especially in the later seasons, it can take me a long time to take my turn because I've just weighing up all the different pros and cons of the cards I can play. So now onto that, I'm going to move on to accessibility, and for this, I've given it a seven out of ten, um, mainly because it is quite easy to learn, but I find that some of the the, the minutiae of it can be a little complicated. Um, it, it leaves you plenty of opportunity for um, challenge. It also has the extra year two and year three mode to increase the difficulty of the game. I found that wasn't really something I needed to increase. But um, I also have to say that putting this tree together when I first got it was a bit of a, a task. Um, also to the point that I've only taken it apart and put it together twice. Um, and I've already managed to damage the top of it ever so slightly. So as I said, for accessibility, I, I'm going to give it a seven. The rule book was easy enough. It's, it's, it's a lot of pages. Um, but one of the things I really enjoyed about the rule book is these little extra bits of lore and theme, which really, you know, add to the feel of the game. Um, so overall, that means this game is going to get an 8 out of 10, which is a perfectly respectful score. Um, like I said, my few cons with the game would be just, just things to do with actually putting this tree together. Okay, so that was my quick review of Everdale. If you like what you see, please feel free to smash that subscribe button up there or check out one of my other videos up here. I've been Johnny, you've been watching The Hexy Beast, and most of all, stay hexy everyone!